Hello, this is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals. We're finding the roses in the Word of God. Today is Thursday, August 29th, and we are in a new series called Don't Be Idle, um, and we are in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, and this is a very timely book for now, um, for the season that we are in. We're all preparing. We're getting ready for our miracles. We're preparing for, for many, many things, and we're preparing most of all for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the signs are everywhere, and we want to be ready for his coming, which could be at any moment. So um, as we're preparing for that, as we're preparing for his coming, we want to know that our hearts are right, that our hearts are ready to receive um, what what the Lord has for us, and that we're in the right place at the right time, that we're in the center of his will. And yesterday we looked at 1 Corinthians, and I gave you the history of the Corinthians church. So if you haven't um, watched yesterday, please do that so that you'll be um, aware and up to date of, of the Corinthian church and what it represents. I do want to point out a couple things from chapter 1 before we go on to chapter 2 that I missed yesterday, which was, um, and and this is a a great way to begin today, that those that are in Christ, meaning you are saved, you are sanctified, meaning set apart for God's service, and um, you're justified by the blood of Jesus. If you have accepted Jesus into your heart today, if you are, that's what I mean by in Christ, you're secure in Him. You know you're in the center of His will, in that place. We are declared not guilty by God in the blood, through the blood, God sees us. And he's declared us not guilty. We have the character, the righteousness of Christ. That's what he means by being set apart for righteousness sake. That we have the character of the Lord Jesus in us. We become righteous. Not on our own accord, but we become righteous by focusing on Jesus. By focusing on what he did for us. We become sanctified. And this is our behavior. Um, We are separate from the world. We don't behave like the world. We don't do things like the world. We don't do what people tell us to do, but we do what the Holy Spirit leads and guides and directs us to do by His Word. His Word is His truth. His Word is His bond. And if, if you're being directed to do something that's outside the Word of God, it's not God that's directing you. So we have to be aware of that, that we're sanctified. We're set apart for the service of God. We don't focus on ourselves. That's one of the the marks of a true Christian. We're not self-centered. We are Christ-centered. We are focusing on, if I do this, will it glorify God? If I do this, will it position me to be in a better place where I can work for the kingdom of God? These are the questions I'm asking myself. These are the, the, you know, the, the checklists that I'm going through each and every day. Um, as I'm, I'm focusing on the Lord and what He did, His finished work that He did for me on the cross, I can't do it. I, I'm not righteous. I'm not sanctified without the blood of Jesus. But through Him, focusing on Him and not on myself, I become righteous. I become sanctified. And the third thing that I become that's most important is I'm redeemed. I have redemption through Jesus Christ. He purchased my permanent freedom. I am no longer a slave to sin. I am no longer a slave to my flesh. But I am set apart when Jesus is in me. I am set apart for his service. I have the goodness of the character of Christ in me, working in me. And I have the redemption of of the promise of heaven today. Praise God. These are all the things that we have when we're in Christ. We have true freedom when Jesus is your focus today. Is he your focus? Is he your all in all? Is he the reason you make every decision you're making or you're making decisions based on what someone else is telling you to do or wants you to do? Or what you're telling yourself will satisfy your wants and your needs. Jesus is the only thing at the end of the day that is going to satisfy. And he's the only thing that's going to satisfy you through eternity. He is present. He is faithful. And only when we glory in the Lord, when we glory in Jesus, will he be magnified in our lives. So in Christ, we are righteous. We are sanctified. We have redemption through him. And I just, I'm so excited to share with you chapter 2 today because this is telling us how to get real wisdom. There's a lot of wisdom, I'll make that face, being offered out there and it's not from God. There's a lot of wisdom floating around that, that's quote unquote wisdom or the things of this world or things that people tell you. And people can tell you a lot of things. Some things people tell you they think is in the Word of God and it's not there. So we have to know the Word of God for ourselves. We have to have the real wisdom that comes from knowing the Word of God. So let's look at chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians. Just dive right in. And it's short. It's only 16 verses. 
but it's telling us the power of God, the wisdom of God versus the carnal things of this world. He says, I, brethren, when I came to you, which was those 18 months when he came um, as a tent maker, came into this community. He, he was working with Priscilla and Aquila, who were also tent makers. He says, when I came to you, I came not in excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring with you unto you the testimony of God. For I was determined not to know anything among you, say Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, I could have gave you a lot of interesting speeches. I could have gave you my wisdom. I could have gave you my knowledge because he was very knowledgeable. Paul was very intelligent. Knew, knew the, the Torah better than anybody. Um, but he said, I didn't come to you in that um, demeanor. I didn't come to you with my knowledge, my wisdom, but I came to you with one simple message. Jesus Christ and him crucified. This is what I came to bring you. He said, I came to you at verse 3 in weakness in fear and in much trembling. He he did not take what he was doing for God lightly. He, he took it with fear and trembling. He wanted to witness. He wanted to declare the testimony of God. He was very knowledgeable in the word. But instead he made a conscious decision. He made, he made that decision to focus on the simplicity of the gospel. That Jesus died for you. He died for your sins. Accept him today. It's that simple, simple message of the gospel. Jesus Christ died for you. He died for your sins. He rose again on the third day. He, he did these things. He resurrected so that you and I could have triumphant power today. That we could triumph over hell, death, and the grave. That we could triumph over sin and shame. That we don't have to walk in humiliation, but that we could walk with him to focus on Christ. That was his focus. He was an ambassador for the Lord. He was not there to be a, a salesman. To throw a pitch. He was there to be a servant of the gospel. This is the sad thing today is that we have a lot of people in pulpits who are there to serve themselves instead of serve God. Paul said, I'm not one of those. I'm not here to serve me. In fact, he, he worked the whole time he was amongst them. Made his own way. He didn't expect anybody to keep him up or do anything. But instead, he did it. He, he went in and he supported himself and he did the work of the Lord in the process. Praise God for people like this. And he said, In my speech and in my preaching was not enticing words of man's wisdom. I didn't use my wisdom. But in demonstration, when I was preaching to you, the, the Spirit was demonstrated. The Spirit, the power of the Spirit. So he had a singular focus. He had a passion to preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He was humble. He was not full of self-confidence. He was not full of his own knowledge, but he was full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's the difference. You know, you can hear people sing or preach, and if they don't have the anointing, they're just speaking and they're just singing. But when the anointing of the Holy Ghost is present on a person, when they preach or sing, it makes all the difference. It changes everything. Why is that? Because the Spirit gives it draws people, and it gives them discernment of who God is. It reveals God to them. And we've got to be full of it if we're going to do the work of God. So he wasn't full of his, his own self. He wasn't full of his own knowledge. He knew his limitations. He knew that what he could do and what he couldn't do. And he knew God could do anything. So he humbled himself and he came before them with fear and trembling. Meaning he was, he was fearful in a good way of God. He reverenced God and wanted God to be glorified in him. He let God's power flow through him. And this is what God wants from you today. He wants his power to flow through you. That it be evident to people that they'd be drawn to him because of the Holy Spirit in you. Not because of something you've done or said. But because of the Holy Spirit speaking through you and drawing. See, we can't persuade people to believe today with human wisdom. It doesn't work. We can't change people's mind with our, our words. Only... When the Holy Spirit is demonstrated through us with power and authority of the truth of God's word, do people change? And they come to the truth and the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We're not here to entertain. The church isn't supposed to be an entertainment station. It's supposed to be a place where people are healed and compelled to change and turn to God. That's what we should be seeing. If we're not seeing that, then that means we need to pray. We need to get into the spirit realm. And, and how do you do that? You get into the word. You get into the prayer closet. You get into a place where you humble yourself before God. Maybe by fasting. Whatever it takes to get your spirit renewed so that you can share his spirit with others. 
God doesn't want you depleted today. He doesn't want you empty because when you're empty, you can't feel or move on with anyone else when they're needing help. So Jesus wants you full today. He doesn't want you empty. He wants you full. He wants you in his will. Verse 6, he says, How be it we speak among them that are perfect, yet not with the wisdom of this world? Because the wisdom of this world won't get you anywhere except dead. The princes of this world that come to naught, the things of the devil come to naught, things that are spawned by the devil, things that come from hell will return to hell. But things that are made in heaven will return to heaven. Praise God. We speak with the wisdom of God in the mystery, he says at verse 7, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. God has things laid up for us that if we knew all that he wanted to give us, it would blow our mind. We don't know the things of God. How can we perceive it, he's saying here? None of the, the princes of this world knew. They don't know everything. The devil doesn't know everything. He's not omnipresent. He's not omniscient. He can't be everywhere. He, he's not all-knowing. But God is. If they had been knowing, they wouldn't have let Jesus go to the cross. And be crucified is what he's saying here in verse 8. They wouldn't have allowed it if they had known what would have happened by that. That Jesus would try on them over hell, death, and the grave. And you know hell still knows that he's a triumph king. He, they, they still know he's victorious. And you and I are victorious because of Jesus Christ today. We have nothing to fear if we're settled in him today. Praise God. Verse 9. I love this verse. But it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard. Neither has entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Are you one that loves him today? Do you love him enough to do what he's asking you to do, to lay down your will and take up his cross and follow him today? If you love him, there's no, there, there's no imagination that we can have to think about what God has in store for those who love him. But God hath revealed these things to us by his spirit. When you accept salvation, the Holy Spirit enters you. And then there is to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit where you're baptized in more power, more authority. And in that authority, God reveals his self to you through his word. And you will understand things and see things that other people don't see. You're seeing it through spiritual eyes. You're not seeing it through man's wisdom. Man's wisdom doesn't allow us to see the things of God. But the Spirit does. God hath revealed them unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things. The Holy Spirit searcheth all things, the deep things of God. You want to know the deep things of God? You want to know where you belong? You want to know where God has for you right now? Where, what He wants for you? Get into the Spirit. <laughs> Get into the Spirit realm. Start reading the Word. Start praying in the Holy Spirit. Believing God that He'll show you His perfect will. He searched the deep things of God. Why would you want anything else but what God wants for you? The Holy Spirit does that. He intercedes and prays for us the will of God. There's nothing better than that. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God knows all the things of God, doesn't it? We don't know everything, and we won't. We won't know everything until we're in His presence. When we're in His presence, we'll know. We'll know everything when we're in His presence in heaven. We'll understand it all, as the song says, better by and by. Verse 12, Now we have received not the Spirit of this world. That's not what we're to carry, but we're to carry the Spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak. We speak the things of God. What are you speaking? That'll tell you how much spirit you have in you. What do you speak? What do the people around you speak? Not in the words that are man's wisdom that teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. He is the teacher, the Holy Spirit is. He's the instructor. And what a better instructor to learn from than, than the voice of God. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He says he's comparing the spiritual things with spiritual you don't want somebody comparing the natural things to you. You want to hear the spiritual because the spiritual is what's going to live forever inside of you. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know him because they are spiritually discerned. The things of God are discerned through the Holy Ghost. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Who's spiritual? God is. He's the Spirit. And we must worship him, remember what Jesus said, in spirit and in truth. Yet he himself is judged of no man. No man will judge God. But God will judge all men. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Do you know the mind of the Lord? No. None of us do. But we can know more about him through the Holy Spirit. 
what you're asking, what you need from God. He will reveal it to you. He can give you discernment to see it with, with eyes that aren't clouded or foggy. He wants to instruct us, Paul said here, verse 16, but we have the mind of Christ. Do you have the mind of Christ today? you got to clothe yourself in the mind of Christ every day. got to clothe yourself in the Word. you got to believe the Holy Spirit when He speaks you, to you and warns you and tells you not to do something. You override Him enough, He, he departs. He backs off. He lets you have your will because God lets us have our free will. And you can override Him for a while, but eventually your running shoes will get worn out. And you're going to have to turn to the Lord. And I don't want my running, I don't want to run from God. I want to run to Him. Because His Spirit is going to reveal to me the good things, the wonderful things of God that He has for me. God's wisdom is only known through the Holy Spirit. You're not going to find wisdom by talking to somebody on the telephone. But when you talk to the Lord, you're going to find true wisdom. That's why we got to be full of the Holy Spirit. To receive His truth, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Teacher. Who's the Holy Teacher? The Holy Spirit. He's our God. You know, material people can't understand the deep things of God. Material people, foolish people, as Paul was talking about here, they don't read the Bible. They don't spend time in prayer because they'd rather be doing other things. They'd rather be be um, doing other things. They might rather be outside, or they might rather say, "Let's go have some fun. Let's do this." They're they're concerned about the carnal things. Let's go make money. Let's let's do what makes us happy. Um, anything that makes me happy can't be bad. We, I've heard lots of people say that. That is absolutely the biggest lie from hell that there is. You know, just because it makes you happy doesn't mean it's right. We have to know the things through the Spirit, spiritually discerned the things of God. How are they discerned? Through the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God. No natural man or woman, Paul tells us here at the end, is equipped to judge a spiritual man. God is our Father. He is Spirit, and we've got to worship Him in spirit today and in truth. Yahweh is His name. God. He alone is able to judge. So we don't judge others. We just take care of, of letting the Holy Spirit convict us and lead us and give us discernment. What other people do is up to them, but we've got to move forward for the Lord today. I pray this word has helped you. I pray that you use it to glorify God today, that you use this word to say, I want to have more power with God. I want to have more discernment of His Spirit. I want to be, as Paul was, humble and trembling. When I do something before, before God, I want Him to know that I'm doing it in a humble way, not to exalt myself, but that He be exalted in me today. Day. Praying that he'll be exalted in you today. Praying that God will be glorified in your life today. Praying that you will turn to him with all your questions and let the Holy Spirit answer them for you today. God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow.